There's no denying visiting the Galapagos is the experience of a lifetime. Sailors crossing the Pacific from Panama to Marquesas are faced with the decision to stop at the Galapagos along the way, bypass it, or fly there as a separate trip apart from cruising. It's not an easy choice. This week, we're chatting with our friend Dale to give you the perspective of someone who sailed there with his wife Katrina, compared with our experience of flying there. Let's get to it. We are here with our friend Dale, who has the C1600 Passage Maker. You guys may have seen him on our channel previously. Dale and his wife Katrina did the passage from Panama to the Galapagos back in May, so they sailed there. C1600 there. And as some of you may know, we recently flew to the Galapagos for a vacation, right? Yeah. And so we wanted to have a discussion with Dale on his experience sailing to the Galapagos versus our experience flying there, because we thought that would be of interest to many of you who are possibly considering doing that passage. So thank you for joining us. (laughs) Oh, come on. Kristen and Fabi, it's very, it's great to see both of you. And uh, I think when you when you contacted me about this, I was laughing because I was talking about it with Katrina. And it is a very interesting debate because when we sailed there in May, I think we went upwind for 700 miles and then came off the wind for the last 400. So we did it the right way. We learned about all the ocean currents, which there are a lot on the way to the Galapagos and the, the weather's fickle. But I think it's a really, it's a really good debate to have because It's kind of like the jury's up because there are a lot of people in the cruising community that now do bypass it. And I think they bypass it for means of of cost or the administration, the inspections, you know, having to get your hulls cleaned, fumigation, the biosecurity. And it starts to look like a great big barrier to going there. So it's definitely worth talking about it. And also, I'm fascinated to see what you guys thought by flying in versus (laughs) us sailing in. So I think the jury's up. You should see how this all concludes. I'm quite interested in myself. I know, right? It'll be interesting to hear people's reaction too as well. But for us, it was the decision was really made for us because we have Yoda, a dog, and dogs are not allowed in Galapagos, at least from uh, United States, a country that has rabies. So she wasn't allowed and we didn't think it would be fair. (laughs) We didn't think it would be fair to uh, have her stay on the boat while we toured around the Galapagos because all told she would have been on the boat for probably at least five weeks and we'll, without getting we'll, off. All those iguanas to chase us around. She would have loved the seals. <laughs> she would have. Oh my God. <laughs> That'd be chaos. Yes, absolute chaos. Oh my God. She would have been in jail. <laughs> We'd love it if you would share with us a really what you think kind of the major considerations someone needs to take into account when deciding if they're going to sail there? I think it's it's interesting because I, you know, I was talking to lots of cruisers when we arrived in Panama and there was a very split view. Most of them, let's say most of that's wrong. So let's say, let's call it half and half for the purposes of this. Um, but some would just say, look, they, they, you know, if they took the administration, they took the cost, they took the hassle and they just thought, we're well, just going to sail straight to the Marquesas. Some, quite rightly, did what you did. They said, well, do you know, I'd rather almost just go there on a quick tour, check it out, and then I'll come back, rejoin the boat. But that depended, because, you know, a lot of people sell family kids and they have guests on board, et cetera. So it varied. I personally took the view, and mind you, I took this decision before I knew what I had to do to get there, and what I was going to go through to get there. But um, I took the view that if we were basically sailing the Pacific and the Galapagos was sort of, it's not quite en route, but um, I just wanted to go. And so I sort of got stuck into it. You have to appoint an agent. We used a guy called Javier who already had a very good reputation and proved to continually have one whilst we worked with him. But that's $2,400. So they have a requirement that your boat's fumigated before you leave Panama. So you've got to think about that. And there, there's an interesting subject, which, you know, as we go wide on this thing to the wider community, <laughs> but there's various different stands of fumigation. I'll let you all work that out when you get in country and discuss that with your local agents. But you need a document that is viable when you show up in the Galapagos to show someone. So when you arrive, there's always fees, et cetera, you know, when you get your boat inspected on arrival. I think you're looking at, I sort of had a sort of battle number of four and a half thousand dollars US to go. So it's, it's not cheap. And then when you arrive, there is a big inspection. I mean, 
everybody gets aboard your boat. They are all hugely friendly, and it's actually like a big party, but you can imagine every big boat shows up full of people. We had about eight people on board. Everything from biosecurity, customs immigration, I don't know, SEAL patrol, a couple of other people. But they go through it in quite good detail. But once you, and you have to get, oh yes, you get a diver under your boat. So if you do show up and you thought, you know what, I'll cut a corner here and I'll show up with a dirty bottom. I'd like to say to you, what they then do is they send you offshore for 40 miles yeah. on your AIS, which I always thought it's a bit high. I mean, why do they send you off 40 miles? Anyway, that's the magic distance. It's like the punishment. So you have to go out there. Then you get to jump over the side with all the big pelagic sharks and everything else out there right. and scrub the bottom of your boat, which, um, which did happen to a couple of people that we met who were very funny about it. But they said it was a massive pain in the, you know, in the, in the arse. But, um, but they did it and got back in. Yeah. But once you're there, you're in the system, actually, they're pretty good. You know, when you go from island to island, again, you're still – and this is where, when we talk about the sailing – it's not like you can get there and cruise around these beautiful islands. Don't get me wrong. When you sail between them, it is stunning. You know, you've got just the most incredible sights. Actually, one question I did have was, because uh, I've heard rumors or whatever, read different things about uh, your food when you arrive. Um, were, did they throw anything away or take anything? Or what was that experience like with the provisions that you went on board? They do have, they have a big list of stuff and you're sat there trying to eat most of it before you arrive. <sighs> and um, so we thought, we thought we'd been pretty good at this. We thought we were prepped up. And, uh, but then it was quite funny because he came aboard, the guy's got his gloves on, you know, the biosecurity man, and he's cruising around and he's, he grabbed our pineapple and said, this isn't good enough. And he sliced the top off, the leaf of it, sliced it off, and then he bagged it very carefully and sealed it up and said, that's the dangerous bit. You can have the rest. <laughs> so cut the top off your pineapples if you take them. He then found um, some pork we had in the freezer and said, you have to eat that tonight on board your boat. And we go, oh, okay. And then and that's all we had, really. You know, they, they don't want they check the seeds and things like that. You can't have things like that. Again, there's a list. But I think, I think I would say to anyone listening to this is they go through that list very thoroughly. They're really friendly. It's not like they, you know, have a fit because they found, you know, a dangerous pineapple and start yelling at you. None of that happens. It's yeah. very friendly. And just says, but they explain it to you, say, you know, the leaves can have insects or whatever it is, and we just want to take that bit, we'll bag yeah. it, and we'll dispose yeah. of it. You have a big final inspection, so everyone comes on, and they really do have a good look through your boat. So, they, um, you know, you've got to make sure you're ready for that. And um, I was asking the guy what they were looking for, and he said that actually you'd be amazed that, you know, people will try and sort of steal the baby turtle from the turtle sanctuary. <laughs> or, um, you know, imagine crazy. taking one of those things home, and then 50 years later it's the size of a, you know, a panda what? in your house. <laughs> Wasn't expected. Um, and he said one. the other thing, the other thing they found is people, um, particularly when you're in um, Isabella, you have the small iguanas running around the cafes and restaurants. He said people pick those up and decide they're yeah. going to keep that as a pet. Oh my god! So um, you'd think it would be an easy trip from Panama, but traveling from one remote place to another by car, plane, bus, and ferry took us about two days. Normally, we sail places, but we decided to fly primarily because our dog, Yoda, is not allowed at all. A huge thank you to our patrons. We're so grateful for your support. If you'd like real-time updates and additional content, consider joining the Harbors Unknown community on Patreon. The total cost for two people to get to the Galapagos was $18.92. Since Dale and Katrina have their lodging, we thought we'd add the cost of lodging on land at an average of $80 a night for two weeks at $1,120. The total cost to fly and be in the Galapagos for two weeks, excluding tours and meals, was $3,012. We made it alive and I didn't get sick. I would say it's a success. And when you get there, there's three core islands, which is San Cristobal, Isabella, and then um, Santa Cruz. And most people do them in that order only because you have to check out from Santa Cruz when you leave mm. to carry on your journey across the Pacific. And then the islands have very different characters. You've kind of got a charismatic little sort of uh, Galapagos town in San Cristobal. And then um, Isabella, I thought, was my favorite because it was just sandy streets and chilled out, total, total zen. 
Yeah. And then um, Santa Cruz mm-hmm. is like the big town where you get the big inspection when you leave. Mm-hmm. The anchoring is, is, is quite limited. You've got a bit of room in um, San Cristobal. Isabel's tight. And, um, you know, you want to really sort of get a bit of local knowledge on the reefs, on the entrance and everything else. But it, it's quite a tight area to be in. And um, and then as you finish off in uh, Santa Cruz, you know, again, it's it's OK. It's a big old, big old harbour, big old port, bit deep, normal fare. Really, you just get put in an area and that's kind of where you stay as a yachty. So you've really got sort of three anchorages. There's one or two other potential areas I think you can go to with permission, but it's, it's not really worth it because you can't get anywhere. When you get to um, Santa Cruz, um, you can use your dinghy because... They've got plenty of dinghy piers, so ignore the taxi boats. And also the supermarkets opposite the dinghy dock. And there's also a very charismatic old part of the town you can go to with your dinghy mm-hmm. as well. Good. So, so you where were, all the fishing boats are. So you were able to use your dinghy in Santa Cruz? Yes. In, uh, in Santa Cruz, we, we just dinghied everywhere because we were provisioning and getting ready for the big hop. Even if you decide to fly to the Galapagos, it is not an inexpensive place to visit. We opted to do a liveaboard dive cruise, and there are many different options from, you know, bargain up to luxury. And we chose one that we thought would be comfortable, Humboldt Explorer, and we caught a deal. It was like, I don't know what, 25% off or something like that. It was absolutely incredible. And you can't dive on your own in the Galapagos. And the only way to go to Darwin and Wolf, which are the outer islands, is to do a week long trip like we did. So you can do daily trips or two, three, four day trips, but you wouldn't be able to go out to Darwin and Wolf, which we really, we really wanted to do. It's an overnight, it's an overnight. uh, It was 16 hours hours on the boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to get there. So yeah. All the excursions, once you start adding them up, it's all like $100, $200. Um, we lucked out and did the Sierra Negra volcano hike, yeah. and that was 40 bucks a person because we arranged it through the hotel where we were staying. They had their own tour company because I did actually book that um, Viator or Viator for 100 bucks a person, but then I was able <laughs> yeah. to cancel it when I found theirs for 40. So be sure to check out the first of our Galapagos videos linked up top and in the description below. Definitely not an inexpensive place no, to visit. Park fees, taxi yeah. fees, mm-hmm. yep. transportation fees. Yep. So it really adds up. I think what you two are saying is really interesting because I didn't know this until we started having this conversation now. And now I listen to that and you think, okay, the truth is, is there's, this isn't an argument about costs now. No, because if you're going to go to the Galapagos and you're on a boat, I know I'm I'm not I'm not going to jump to a conclusion here, but I am. Um, (laughs) But um, if you've got a boat, you might as well just go, because if you fly, it sounds like you're going to end up spending. I would honestly put, as I said, a, you know, the battle number for me. And we did, you know, spend a lot of time in the water, did a lot of stuff. Weren't that I think it's quite as long as you guys were there for a couple of weeks or so because we needed Mm -hmm. to get moving on to the Marquesas. Yeah. But um, I'd say, you know, we were around that five, five and a half thousand dollar mark, I think, mm-hmm. for the, if I took the whole Galapagos piece. I'm going to put my first stake in the sand here and say I thought it was incredible because the richness of marine life between Panama and the Galapagos itself. I mean, we found you know sperm whales just sunbathing on the surface and we just literally hove to and it's drifted past the, the, the the sheer feeding frenzies, really, the, the tunas just firing out the water. I think a dolphin jumps out gracefully. A tuna just goes, erupts like a Polaris missile and you know, fires itself back in. The bird life. So the whole journey there was spectacular. We arrived at dawn through no navigational skills on my behalf, just <laughs> luck and timing. Um, but to see the Galapagos coming out of the morning light and kick a rock, which is a very famous feature there, that was pretty amazing. And when you come into... San Cristobal to start with, I mean, it is hilarious because, you know, you are literally fighting to keep the sails off your boat. Everyone tells you about it. But until you oh, wake up yes. in the morning yeah. and yeah. find them all tucked up when your favorite cushions in your cockpit and you're oh trying to God. evict them, and they, they're gorgeous, but they don't ask stink. And um, so you're there trying to brush. It's like the biggest dog you could imagine molting fishy fur all over your boat oh if you let them God. get too close. But they, they are gorgeous and funny when you're under your boat scrubbing or cleaning it so they're all playing around you. And, you know, you have to step over them all at the dock. So you do feel you've arrived. And I'm sure you felt yeah. somewhere yeah. completely different. 
And um, so that was incredible. But I thought the journey there was amazing. I really did. Yeah, I'm sure it was absolutely incredible. I mean, there's nothing like sailing to a place on your own boat and experiencing the wildlife that way. It just really is amazing. Yeah. So with that, that kind of experience really is priceless, honestly. Yeah. So that's kind of like, I think the barrier, the cost, the paperwork, trying to get everything together, the fickle weather, you know, kind of people look at that and think, well, do I want all of that? And what am I going to get if I get there? Right. You, as I said earlier on, you have to anchor in kind of quite specific places. You cannot just cruise around. All the tours tend to start from onshore. You can't dive on your own. You have to go with a, a certified sort of dive boat. There's, the only walks you can really do are quite localized. Mm -hmm. But that said, if you do snuggle around a bit, sort of sneak about a bit, there are some really nice local walks with some good local snorkeling off the back of various places. And that's incredible. You know, there's a lot down there, you know, big turtles, big fish, sharks, etc., And it's just so wild around you. I mean, it's really quite, quite mind blowing. So we love that. Tours are not cheap. You know, by the time you get the two of you, it's like a couple of hundred bucks every time you even look at oh, one to oh, go yeah. somewhere. Absolutely. Yep. If you decide to go there on a really, really calm weather slot is you can't buy, you can't literally fill up with diesel. They ration you. So when I got there, I was told I could have 40 gallons. And I couldn't have it. Um, and I said, well, I'll go to a petrol station, you know, we'll go and find out. So you guys got a gas station and um, <laughs> I'll go there and um, I'll, you know, I'll sort of speak to some guy, apply the charm and dollars and they'll give me more. And not a bit of it. They wouldn't do that at all. They'd say, unless you've got a permit, you're not getting it. And so they delivered the fuel out and a bunch of cans to the boat. So you, want, you obviously want to be careful putting that in. So we're lucky we didn't use much fuel at all going there. But um, it's a factor. It's a good, challenging sale. The passage there, and I'm very conscious of whenever I'm on your channel, there's far more experienced sailors than I am, you know, in terms of ocean experience. But, um, you know, it's, um, it's, a, it's a fairly fickle passage in terms of weather. You can either have it on the rare occasions, you might get some winds with you. On our occasions, I planned it well. I, I made sure that we had the wind against us for as long as possible. <laughs> and then, um, obviously, I tried to work the ocean currents into that whole equation. But we did, it's about 10, 15 nautical, so 1,050 miles nautical, which took us seven days. So we didn't do too badly. And <clears throat> Womble was a pretty good, you know, she was good and steady up, you know, off on the wind. So we, we made some good time. The the challenge of keeping the seals at the very best on the back of your boat and not in it, that'll be the eternal game you'll play for all the time you're there. Um, it's just, it's just hilarious. <laughs> but, oh my goodness. They are so cute, but I've seen your pictures and... I don't think I would want them on no, my boat. They look like they can oh, no. make some big poos. <laughs> it's coming down to the whole cost and hassle thing, isn't it? If you're if mm -hmm. you're on a budget cruising and you don't want to lose like, you know, a month or two months cruising budget, because that's yeah. what the Galapagos will take out of you. Yeah. If yeah. you're um mm -hmm. and that's that's the that's the decision point on this. Yeah. But here's the here's my challenge back to you guys, which is given everything that we both did going to the Galapagos. Um, I find it impossible to regret. It was, to, oh, yeah. in my mind, as a life experience yep. and doing it, it was amazing. Yeah. It yeah. was absolutely incredible. Yeah. I highly recommend it to anyone yeah. because yeah. it's just such a different place and you'll learn so much. Like I learned an immense amount, some good and some things that were just kind of eye-opening. Galapagos is whatever, 600 miles off the coast of Ecuador, but it's still feeling the reach of Chinese shark finning or mass tourism because there are a lot of tourists there. So it's not like you go there and you feel like you're in this kind of far-flung place on Santa Cruz. For example, yeah, it's got a little bit of that Cancun vibe you know, on the street, you know. And uh... I think what you say there, Kristen, is so true. And the more as you come across the whole Pacific, and the benefit of everyone watching this now, mm. you know, we're currently sat in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, you know that that pressure, that eco pressure, which is you know the Galapagos are working so hard to sustain, yep. and they have to balance it with the need of income for tourism. Otherwise, they lose exactly. all their young people. Right. right. Um, and then we see the impact of plastics, and we see the impact. I mean. The, the Chinese fishing fleets, as you get closer to here on the way to, you know, somewhere, they're 20 miles across. You can just see them, you know, yeah, they're huge. Incredible. And so the sort of harvesting going on. So it is it is fascinating to get somewhere that's really tried to preserve itself. It is amazing to get to a place where the wildlife has not been disturbed by man 
I think what you say is so true, and it's fascinating to see what they're doing to try and preserve it. It's mm-hmm. fascinating to see the projects. And I think as a kind of almost like a precursor for people going across the Pacific, you see that increasingly, which is heartening in different areas where people are trying to do it. But the Galapagos are definitely at a point where they're preserving nature as it was. And when you just see, yes. I suppose for anyone listening to this, the one thing I would say is that the richness of marine life and, and the natural sort of setting of it and how it is, you're peaking in the Galapagos area, a thousand miles either side. Mm-hmm. And as you come further and further across and you start heading and sort of getting towards New Zealand and coming closer to this side, um, you see more more human impact as it comes along. So that's another really good reason to go there. I think we really enjoyed the diving part. I think it was the, the yeah. light swimming with the whale sharks and hammer sharks and all that stuff was just, uh, you know, a dream for it's us. A, and, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It really was. I can't. I can't wait to see when, because I, I know what it's like. I know you're, you know, you're in the in the countries of the challenging uploading. But I cannot wait to see some of your stuff from that. I think that's yeah. just been incredible. You know, as as we kind of as we sort of wrap this up, I would just say it's. I think my from my perspective, listening to what you just said, the only thing now is if you weren't going to sail there, if the, it's, it's 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 a simple cost. It's it's expensive. It's not cheap. And um, but if you've got a boat. And you want to go there? I would say it's it's amazing. And if you want to fly there, from what you're saying, in prison, it's going to cost you the same anyway. So yep. you might as well take your boat, Close unless you've got yeah. a dog. Absolutely. As I said, the, the, yeah, the dog. I think is the is the big um, is the big, yep. big. And if you want to have a real dive experience with like three four dives a day, you have to get one of those dive boats, anyways. And, right. And so yeah. depends what you're wanting. Depends to what do. you want to do, right? Well, Dale, that was very informative. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us and share your experience with everyone. We really appreciate it. Oh, no, it's always, it's great, as always, to talk to the pair of you and see you still still out there doing your thing, which is great. All right. Well, listen, you two, look after yourselves. It's wonderful to see you as always. Thank you Same so much. Same to you. Thank right. you so Thank much. You. Yeah. Bye-bye.